Hello, I'm Katherine Ellison. And if I ever forget that I have ADHD, something or someone always comes along to remind me. I wasn't diagnosed until I was 48 years old, and frankly, it was a big relief. There had to be some reason for why I'd lost so many pairs of sunglasses and friends, and why I'd only narrowly escaped so many car crashes and cooking fires. ADHD is widely thought of as a problem that involves little boys, but in fact today, about 10 million U.S. men and women suffer symptoms that include high levels of distraction, forgetfulness, impulsivity, and lots and lots of accidents. In recent years, our world has become so frazzled that a lot of other people are starting to feel like they might be on the spectrum. About five years ago, Time Magazine even reported that our attention spans were now shorter than a goldfish. Thank heavens there's lots of other research that shows we're still winning that race. But truly, there's a big difference between people who could legitimately be diagnosed with ADHD and everyone else. ADHD is a neurobiological disorder that has to do with dopamine and other important chemical messengers in the brain. Some of us manage to hyperfocus, but for the vast majority, it remains a genuine disability that can sabotage you when you least expect it. I was lucky early on to have achieved my childhood dream of becoming a foreign correspondent. Some of my colleagues would later tell thrilling stories from that time. Some were even shot at while covering wars. Not me. I got injured breaking my leg by stumbling into a manhole in Managua, Nicaragua, while I was chasing after the newly elected president, Violeta Chamorro. I was hoping for a quote, and I didn't even actually need that quote. I'd already filed my story for the day, but I couldn't stop myself when I saw all the other reporters running after her. And yet what really burns me up even today is I know I could have caught her if it hadn't been for that manhole. Chimoto was recovering from knee surgery at the time and walking really slowly on crutches. Okay, so all that may make what I have to say next seem counterintuitive, but hear me out. There are lots of good reasons why someone with ADHD can be your best guide as we move out of the pandemic. Think about it. Millions of us have been quarantined in our sweats, if we're privileged, for more than a year and a half. And while COVID has brought all kinds of losses and grief, it's also given many of us a brilliant reason to slow down and reduce our pre-pandemic levels of information overload. But now, as we re-emerge into real life, friends and family members are telling me they're feeling swamped. Everything seems like too much. School drop-offs, dinners out with friends, traffic, parking, office politics, do you or don't you still wear a mask? Where can we find the new skirts and pants to match our perfect Zoom tops? It's only natural to feel anxious, distracted, forgetful, even overwhelmed. Well, welcome to my world. People with ADHD know from overwhelmed. I think of us as the coal mine canaries of chronic distraction. We've spent lifetimes chasing after our wandering minds. The good news for you is that in the process, quite a few of us with ADHD have come up with some excellent coping techniques, which I'm happy to share. We can give you ways to manage your attention, even if we can't follow them. We're experts in spawning attention rabbit holes, even if we usually go right down them. For instance, we know that of course, we should all get enough sleep, eat right, and get regular exercise, which tons of research shows helps us all cope with cognitive challenges. We know we shouldn't ever spend more than $15 on a pair of sunglasses, and we should designate one special place to leave our keys. But what I want to share with you today is more fundamental guidance, namely three hard-earned lessons that go right to the soul of chronic distraction, to how you treat yourself amid the inevitable overwhelm and after some inevitably stupid mistakes. Mistakes happen to the best of us, despite our best intentions. Yet there are some things that can help you to avoid them. 
which is why my first tip is to mistrust your sense of urgency. My psychiatrist said this to me so many times over so many years that I finally put it on a bumper sticker. And yes, I have to do something about that tape holding it up. Impulsivity, driven by a constant sense of urgency, is a big danger for people with ADHD, and that danger is rapidly spreading to the neurotypical. The sheer amount of information we have to process every day would make any of our ancestors' heads explode. It can make us feel constantly driven. It makes it easy to miss the big picture. As I've struggled for many years to cope with this problem, I found it really helpful to give myself little supports, even just a strategically placed post-it or two, so I remember that I don't really have to answer someone right away when I'm upset with them or even buy those cool-looking dress yoga pants advertised on Facebook. Computers make it so easy to give in to our impulses, but fortunately, even Silicon Valley has now recognized the problem and is selling us apps that can shut off other apps so we can all get more work done. A good technological support system can also help you avoid multitasking, which we're all trying to do more and more these days because we think we can. I know I'm not alone in believing I'm one of the very few, very exceptional people who can safely text and drive. I recently read that 98% of commuters say that sending a text while driving is unsafe, yet at least 40% also say that they do it all the time. Now, not all of those people are suffering from ADHD. But what we all have in common is we're really, really good at self-deception. Neuroscientists warn that we're never really doing two things at a time, but always switching back and forth and often missing critical information as we do. Now, that's not going to be a big loss if you're eating popcorn while watching a movie, but it's probably best not to play words with friends with someone while you're talking on the phone with your boss. Try to do one thing at a time you might even like it. The rare joy of singular focus helps explain why mindfulness is now so popular, even for people with ADHD who generally really suck at it. It is such a luxury to attend to just one thing, even for just 15 minutes. Now that's one reason my second tip is to limit your chronophagers. And you heard that right, it's chronophagers. It's a somewhat obscure term derived from the Greek chronos for time and phage for eat. Think about what's eating your time. I find it really helpful every once in a while to write down a list of all my commitments and activities apart from the things I have to do. Marie Kondo wrote that famous book about the life-changing magic of getting rid of material objects that no longer spark joy. Consider applying that advice to the way you spend your time. Go through your mental closets with the same rigor. And right now is a great time to do this, given that so many of us discovered so many creative ways to fill up the time we might otherwise have spent commuting to work or seeing people in three dimensions. I'm sure there are some chronophagers you took on during COVID that you won't want to part with. My family ended up getting a third dog, which I understand some people might think of as excessive. And, understandably, the bar for what constitutes meaningful pursuits got lowered a bit during the quarantines. Maybe you'll keep that subscription to the Jigsaw Puzzle Club and even keep watching Selling Sunset and 90 Day Fiancé. But if you do, just remember that as we get to go outside again and other demands on our time increase, it means we all have to give up something else because the march of time really isn't as forgiving as it might have felt these past months. And speaking of forgiveness, tip number three is to surround yourself with kindness. People with ADHD understand that even if you heed all the hacks in the world, you are still going to screw up. In our post-pandemic world of revved up cognitive demands, screw ups are more and more to be expected. And yet sometimes the worst mistake we can make is to think that we need people around us to give us tough love so we can be our best. When it comes to the people closest to us, we need the opposite of that. 
the rest of the world has enough tough love to spare. And by the way, when I say you should surround yourself with kind people, the first person I'm thinking of is you. You'll have your best chance of surviving in the post-pandemic world if you know you can recover from embarrassing mistakes, knowing you did your best, and this too will pass. So for those of my friends with ADHD out there and everyone else who might have been looking at TikTok on a split screen, I'm going to repeat the three tips. One, mistrust your sense of urgency. Two, limit your chronophagers. And three, surround yourself with kindness. And if you're starting to feel overwhelmed in our post-pandemic world, do something truly kind for yourself. Talk to someone with ADHD. We've been there and we'll be there again and again and again.